In this video, we will study the method Gaussian elimination to solve linear systems of equations with more than two variables. Let's look at an example directly. In this example, we need to solve this system of three linear equations with three variables, x1 and z. From observation, we can tell that this system is not that hard to solve. If we number these three equations, 1, 2, 3, then we can see that equation 3, z equals to negative 2, is already part of the solution. Therefore, we can substitute that into equation 2 with only variables y and z, and from equation 2, we can solve for y. So equation 2 becomes this, with z substituted by negative 2, and we can solve for y, that is negative 3. Now, since we know both z and y, we can substitute both of them into equation 1 and solve for x. Therefore, equation 1 becomes this, with y substituted by negative 3 and z substituted by negative 2. So we have one equation, only one unknown, x. Therefore, we can solve for x, which is 4. And that is the solution to this example. By the way, this technique we just used is called back substitution. Let's look at another example. For this example, again, we have three linear equations, and we need to solve for the three unknowns, x, y, and z. And it looks like this example is a lot more complicated than the previous one, and we cannot use the technique of back substitution directly to solve for this system. Now I'm going to show how to solve this system following a strict procedure. First thing first, we number these equations, 1, 2, 3. And then I am going to apply what we learned in the previous video, the method of elimination. And for the very first step, I am going to use equation 1 to eliminate x from both equation 2 and 3, respectively. So if you still recall the method of elimination that we learned before, I'm going to take equation 1, multiply it by negative 2, and get this. And then my equation 2 stays the same. As you can see, what I have achieved is that now, for x, its coefficients in equation 1 and 2 only differ by the sign. Therefore, if I add them together, I can cancel out x and I'm left with only 9y minus 9z equals to negative 9. And this equation can be simplified to y minus z equals to negative 1. And I'm going to use this equation to replace the previous equation number 2. So the new equation number 2 is y minus z equals to negative 1. Then I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to use equation 1 to eliminate x from equation 3. To do that, I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 3. My equation 3 stays the same. Again, what I've achieved is that for variable x, its coefficients in the two equations only differ by the sign. Therefore, when I add them together, x get cancelled out. I'm left with negative 7y plus 10z equals to 1. And this is my new equation 3. This is the original system of equations. And now I'm replacing equation 2 and 3 with the new equations. Notice that the new equations 2 and 3 only contain variables y and z. They do not have x in them. And now I'm going to use the elimination method again, but this time I'm going to use equation 2 to eliminate y from equation 3, and then I will solve for z. To do that, equation 2 is multiplied by 7, and get 7y minus 7z equals to negative 7. Equation 3 stays the same, and if I add these two equations together, I can cancel out y and I'm left with 3z equals to negative 6. And from here, I can solve for z, which is negative 2. And let me call this my new equation number 3. And now equation 3 is replaced by the new equation. 
you might notice that now this system looks exactly the same as example one. And from here, we can easily solve it using back substitution. We substitute z equals to negative two into equation two, and we can solve for y. And we can substitute both y and z in equation one and solve for x. And the solution is exactly the same as the solution in example one. This form is known as the row echelon form because of its stair-like shape. As you can see, when compared to the previous equation, the next equation is always missing one variable and all the coefficients are positive one. Since row echelon form is a lot easier to solve, therefore, when we have a general system of linear equations, we want to transform this system into its equivalent row echelon form so that we can easily solve the system. And we're going to do the transformation through row operations, which include switching any two equations in the system, multiplying any equation with a non-zero constant, and adding the multiple of one equation to another to replace it. Through row operations, the system is transformed into its equivalent system, which means that they will have exactly the same solutions. And this procedure, including row operations, transformation into row echelon form, and using back substitution to solve the linear systems, this method is known as Gaussian elimination method. Let's look at this system. There are four linear equations and four variables x, y, z, and w, and we need to solve for all of them. We're going to use the Gaussian elimination method, which means that we need to first transform this system into its equivalent row echelon form through row operations. And we number these equations first. And from observation, the very first step is to switch equations one and three and then switch equations two and four. Remember, we can switch any two equations in the system and produce equivalent system. And the reason why I wanna do this is because after simply switching the equations, now equation one and two look very close to the row echelon form already. Now with this new system, what do we do next? Since equation three should only have variable z and w, equation four should only have variable w, therefore, next thing we do is to use equation one to eliminate x from both equations three and four, respectively. Again, applying method of elimination, equation one multiplied by negative four, equation three stays the same. This way, when I add them together, x gets canceled out, and I'm left with this equation, and I am going to use this equation to replace the original equation three. And this is my new equation three. And I'm going to do the same thing for equation four. Equation one multiplied by negative two. Equation four stays the same. Add them together, cancel out x, and then this is my new equation four. Now, since equation three and equation four should not have variable y either, therefore the next step is to use equation two to eliminate y from both equations three and four. We cannot use equation one anymore because we have already eliminated x from equations two, three, four. We do not want to introduce x back. So we find that least common multiple for equation two and three. So equation two multiplied by negative five, equation three multiplied by six, add them together, cancel out y. And this is my new equation three. Same thing for equation four. Equation two multiplied by negative nine, equation four multiplied by six, and for variable y, its coefficients only differ in signs in the two equations, add them together, and this is my new equation four. 
And now I only need to eliminate z from equation four, and I'm going to use equation three to do that. And this equation can be simplified to a direct solution of w, which is w equals to negative one. And this is my new equation four. And now, even though this system is not in strict row echelon form because not all leading coefficients are positive one, but it is close. And the most important thing is that when compared to the previous equation, the next equation is missing one variable. And we can use it now to solve for all four variables. So we're going to use the method of back substitution again. And we're going to substitute w equals to negative one into equation three to solve for z. And we substitute both w and z into equation two to solve for y. And the last thing we do is to substitute y, z, and w all in equation one, and we can solve for x. And that is the solution to this linear system. Let's quickly look at this system of equations. We have three equations, three unknowns, and we want to solve for all of them using the Gaussian elimination method. And since equation two is already missing x, so what we need to do is to eliminate y from equation three using equation two. Therefore, when we apply this method of elimination, add these two equations together, we realize that not only can we eliminate y, but we are eliminating z at the same time. And as a result, when we add these two equations together, the left-hand side is zero, but the right-hand side is negative 13. Therefore, zero equals to negative 13, obviously is a false statement. This type of system is known as inconsistent system. Therefore, this system has no solution. Then let's look at a very similar example. Again, we're trying to eliminate y from equation three following the similar approach. And when we add these two equations together, we notice that not only do we have zero on the left-hand side, we also have zero on the right-hand side. Zero equals to zero. That is a statement that is always true. Unlike the previous example, this system does have solutions. Since, as you can probably tell, equation two and three are essentially the same, therefore, for this system, we only have two independent equations, but we have three unknowns, therefore, we cannot solve for the three unknowns specifically. However, we can solve for their relations. If we assume z equals to a real number a, then we can substitute z into equation two and solve for y, again, as an expression of a. And then we can continue to back substitute z and y into equation one and solve for x, again, as an expression of a. Therefore, this expression represents the general form of the solutions to this linear system. This is a dependent system, which means that the xyz variables have values that depend on each other. And because a can be any real number, there are infinite number of solutions to the system. For example, when z equals to one, y equals to one half, and x equals to negative five represents one solution out of the infinite solutions to the system.